In the morning, the wrestling games began with the beating of drums. While the music played, some of the best wrestlers like Chanura, Mushtika, Shala, and Toshala walked into the middle of the big arena. Everything was nicely cleaned and decorated with flags and flowers all around. Many kings had come to see the games. King Kamsa came with his ministers and secretaries. He sat on his special throne. Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men gave Kamsa delicious things to eat made from milk, which they had brought all the way from Vrindavan. Then they sat down by the king's side on a platform especially meant for them. Kamsa was sitting in the middle of all the other kings and ministers. For so many years, he had done so many wicked things to make sure he would be safe from Krishna, the one person who was supposed to kill him. He had put Krishna's family into prison. He had ordered his soldiers to kill so many innocent little babies. He himself had killed all of Krishna's baby brothers. He had sent so many horrible demons to Vrindavan to give terrible trouble to the wonderful devotees living there. He had even arranged a special festival to trap and kill Krishna in Mathura. But even after he had done all of these things, his heart was beating very fast in fear of dying, very much in fear of Krishna. When Krishna and Balaram heard the drums beating, they also went to see the fun at the wrestling arena. When they got there, they saw the biggest elephant they had ever seen. Its name was Kuvalaya Pida, and it was standing right in the middle of the gateway so Krishna and Balaram could not get inside. Kuvalaya Pida tried to catch Krishna with his long trunk, but Krishna very quickly jumped behind Kuvalaya Pida and caught his tail. Krishna pulled and pulled. He dragged that elephant backwards from this side to that, just as he used to pull the tail of a calf when he was a small boy. Then Krishna went in front of the elephant and gave him a loud, strong slap. Quickly! Krishna jumped behind him again. He tripped the elephant by his two back legs and made him fall down. Kuvalaya Pita tried to stab Krishna with his ivory tusks, but Krishna got up too fast for that. As soon as the elephant came close, Krishna caught his trunk and pulled him down hard. When the elephant and driver fell, Krishna jumped up on the elephant's back and broke it. Then he killed the driver. All the cowherd boys jumped and clapped, shouting, Jai! All glories to Krishna! All glories to Krishna, the killer of the big elephant demon! After killing Kuvalaya Pita, Krishna pulled out one of his ivory tusks and swap on his shoulder. Lord Balram took the other tusk on his shoulder. Then they went into the wrestling arena with all of their cowherd boyfriends. As Krishna walked in, the wrestlers thought he looked as strong as a thunderbolt. Most of the people there thought he was the most beautiful person they had ever seen. To the ladies, he was a very, very beautiful boy. The cowherd men saw Krishna as their dear lifelong friend and brother from Vrindavan. 
The kings there thought Krishna looked like the strongest of all the kings. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda thought of Krishna as their most loving child. Great yogis and saints saw him as the super soul in the hearts of all living creatures. And King Kamsa, who had been afraid of Krishna for a long, long time, saw Krishna as death personified. Many bands played music to start the games. The best wrestler, Chanura, walked up to Krishna and Balaram. He said, My dear Krishna and Balaram, you are very wonderful and strong. The king and all the people here want to see you wrestle at these games. We have heard that you like to wrestle with your friends while you take care of your cows in the forest. Please, you wrestle with us so the king and everyone here will see the fun. Krishna said, We do love to wrestle, but we are only young boys. In Vrindavan, we play with our friends who are young like us. We think it is very nice to do that, but you are very big wrestlers and much older. No one here will think it's fair to see you wrestling with boys who are as young as we are. Janura said, but, my dear Krishna, we all know that you are not just any small boy. You are very different from any of the other children, and so is your big brother Balaram. You have already killed the big mad elephant Kuvale Apida in such a wonderful way. Because you are so strong, you can fight with the strongest wrestlers. Please, you wrestle with me. And your older brother, Balaram, can wrestle with Mushtika. So Krishna and Balaram wrestled with Chanura and Mushtika. And as they did, the crowd went wild. They were locked together, hand to hand, leg to leg, head to head, chest to chest. They punched and pushed each other from place to place. They caught and threw one another down on the ground. One picked the other up, and one rushed forward to hold the other down. They dragged and pushed each other from one side of the arena to the other. But all the people watching knew that it was not a fair fight. Krishna and Balaram were just youths, and everyone was very worried. Lord Krishna, knowing that everyone was worried about him, didn't waste any more time. He punched Chanura hard three times with his fist. Then he caught Chanura's folded hands and wheeled his huge body around and around and threw him down dead on the ground. All of Chanura's valuable bangles and jewelry fell scattered here and there in the dirt around him. At the same time, Balaram hit and kicked Mushtika so hard that blood and vomit came out of his mouth. Mushtika fell down dead just as a tree falls down in a storm. 
So many more great wrestlers came up to fight, but Krishna and Balaram killed them all. Other wrestlers began running away, afraid for their lives. All the cowherd boys ran up to their wonderful friends, clapping and saying, Well done! Well done! All glories to Krishna! All glories to Balaram! The drums played loudly and everyone talked about how perfectly Krishna and Balaram wrestled while their ankle bells sweetly tinkled. Only King Kamsa did not clap, and for him it was not happy at all. Kamsa did not even like to hear the drums playing because Krishna had won the games. The king's best wrestlers were badly beaten and killed, while others had run away. Kamsa shouted, Stop the drum playing! By my order! These two sons of Vasudev should leave Mathura right now. Catch the cowherd boys and kill Nanda Maharaj for hiding Krishna and Balaram. Kill this Vasudeva and my father Ugrasena. <laughs> Lord Krishna was very angry when he heard the terrible way Kamsa was talking. In a second, he jumped up to the king's throne and caught him and knocked the crown off his head. He grabbed him by his long hair and dragged him down from his seat to the wrestling arena. Krishna threw the demoniac king down on the ground. He sat on his chest and punched him again and again until Kamsa lay there. Dead. Kamsa was always waiting for Krishna and had thought about him 24 hours a day. He never stopped thinking about the eighth son of Devaki, Krishna, who would kill him one day. He thought only about Krishna while he was eating, while he was walking, while he was riding, standing, sitting or working. Because he always thought about Krishna, Kamsa got freed from the cycle of birth and death and went back home, back to Godhead. Krishna dragged the king's body all around for everyone to see that the demon Kamsa was really dead. Almost everyone shouted very happily, All glories to Krishna! All glories to Krishna! But some people were angry, especially Kamsa's eight brothers and a few demonic friends who wanted to kill Krishna. So Balaram used the elephant tusk he was carrying and killed Kamsa's eight brothers, one after another. Then the demigods showered flowers while the wives of the demigods danced for joy after Krishna and Balaram killed the wicked King Kamsa and all the other demons. In this way, Krishna kept his promise. He came just to kill the evil kings who were disturbing the world. Thank you.